Hello and welcome to this AWS Dev Chat today. My name is Carlos Zambrano. I am a technical manager at Globan, and today I'll be talking about Boost Serverless application performance using Amazon RDS Proxy and Amazon Aurora. So let's start. About the agenda, first of all, I'm going to start with an introduction to Amazon RDS Proxy. Next, I'll be go uh, to a typical serverless application architecture. And follow that, I will show you different features about RDS Proxy, such as scalability, high availability, security. And finally, we will finish with a hands-on demo about the RDS Proxy in the AWS console. So let's start. OK. About Amazon RDS Proxy is a highly available, fully managed and secure proxy that it is going to use between your serverless application and your Amazon RDS database. It has different features. The first one, you can pull and share database connections. You could increase the availability of your application and we'll explain you a little bit. It will improve the data security through the integration with different services such as Secrets Manager and the enforce of TLS to, the, to connect to the database. And also, you have to take into account that it is a fully managed service, so it is, it is awesome. Continue with that, this is a typical serverless application where you have a lot of Lambda function ingesting through your database. So it will create a lot of connection, and you have to take into account different things in this architecture. The first one that you have to take into account is about the security architecture. When you have different Lambda functions connecting to the same database, you have to manage all the credential connections. The second one, the database performance of handling a lot of connection. The third one is the failover time. When you have critical applications, you need to improve your failover time, reduce to zero. It is very important for a critical application. And the fourth one is the connection management. You need to improve the connection management management in order to guarantee that all of the Lambda function from the server application it's going to write correctly to the database. So this is our challenge that we have in a typical serverless architecture. In this architecture, we include the RDS proxy, such as a layer between our serverless application and our database. And it is going to add between, as I told you, serverless application and database. It's going to handle the security connection management, and failover. And all the Lambda functions will connect directly to the RDS proxy. What are the benefits? The first one is secure architecture, managing all the credentials with Secrets Manager. The second one is it is going to handle all the connection management, so it will increase the performance of your database. The third one, it will handle all the failover time, so the failover time is going to reduce a lot. And as I told you, the, it is going to improve the connection management. About the connection pool, we have three things to take into account. The first one is multiplexing. When you think about multiplexing, is the reuse of a connection after it's each transaction in your, in your section. So you could reuse connections, the first one. The second one is borrowing. is when you temporarily remove a connection from the pool and reuse it. And after you use, it will return that connection to the original pool. And the third one is the pinning. The pinning is when the RDS process is not sure if it can reuse a connection, so it maintains that connection in the session until the session ends. About high availability, it will increase your high availability application. It will speed up the failover time up to 60-70%. So if you test your high availability, uh, the failover time directly to the database, it will take, I don't know, 10 seconds. If you use RDS proxy, it will increase in seven seconds your failover time. So it will be very awesome. The failover time is going to reduce to zero. And about the security, it will enforce the use of TLS between the RDS proxy and the database. And also you could, enforce the use of security transport layer through your client to the database with different parameters depending on your engine. 
Okay, so let's go into the demo. In this demo, I will show you all these features in a hands-on. So please enjoy the demo. The main purpose of this demo is to show you what are the advantages of using an RDS proxy like a ledger between our serverless application and our database. So I will show you how could we reduce the failover time using an RDS proxy and also how could improve the performance of our database uh, in Aurora using an RDS proxy. So the first thing I will create is an event subscription because I would like to track every event on the cluster. So I will go to the left panel and I will select right here event subscriptions. Now I am going to click here and create event subscription. I will put a name event reinvent. I will add a new new email topic in order to get the notifications to my email. SNS reinvent and my email my email reinvent clouding the LA and the source type here in the source type I will select clusters because I deploy a complete cluster in Aurora so I select clusters after that I will click on select the specific clusters and I will click in Aurora provision after that, I could select all event categories or specify some event, but for my use case, I will select all event categories in order to track all events in the cluster and I click on create. After I create the SNS topic in order to get the notifications, I need to confirm that topic in my email. So I will go to my email. Here I have just right now that one and click on confirm subscription okay confirm I just confirmed this subscription and it is completely fine so I will go back to my RDS console and after that I will uh, use a code in Python in order to test the database. So I will show you the code. Here we have a code in Python. This code is deployed in a Lambda function, but for this demo, I deployed in Cloud9 in order to show you in real time the events that it is ingesting in the database. So let me explain to you a little bit the code. It is really easy. I use the PyMySQL library in order to connect to the database. Also, we have here our variables in order to connect to my database. After that, I have, I, I made the connection right here, con by MySQL, and here is the connection to the database. And after that, the more important thing is about this from here, from element sender second. Why? Because here I create a cycle in order to ingest some items through the database and it will show me in real time okay I'm ingesting one two three and if the connection gets an error it will show me the seconds of the error so I will track in real time the failover of the database so I will execute and let's make a failover and we could see the time for recovery so in the CLI I will clear the screen and I will say Python and my script Rainbow enter and it start to ingest in some data in my database. Now I'm going to go to the database, databases. I will select the writer and click on actions and failover and click on failover and it start to fail over the database. So I will go back to the script and we will wait a few seconds in order to start seeing some errors about the lost connection to the database. So there we go. This starts some error, so let's wait to the failover complete. Okay. Okay, now it's complete. So control C right here. Okay, and let's check the amount of time that it takes to make the failover. 
So the failover start in second 24 and it finished in the second 34. It was about 10 seconds, 10 to 11 seconds, the failover. So this is the first part, 10 seconds to make the failover using directly the database. And let's check here in our email. We click on notifications and we get right here. Started cross a set of failover to instance in this time, in this time, and we could see the difference in time. It's about, I, I don't know. Yeah, let's check. It's about 40 seconds, 43 seconds. It's about here, but in our ingesting, it will lose about 10 seconds, but the failover takes 40 seconds, almost 40 seconds. Okay. Now I'm going to implement an RDS proxy and we will te test again the failover time. But before that, let's start again and it is going to ingest, ingest a lot of information. So if we check our database, it will increase the CPU. Why? Because it is starting ingesting some data, some data, some data. And we will, uh, we will chase the failover using the RDS proxy. So let's go to create an RDS proxy. Now I'm going to create the RDS proxy. So I will go to the left panel and click on proxies. After that, I create proxy. And first of all, I'm going to put a name proxy reinvent and gen compatibility my database is an aurora mysql so i will let uh, mysql about the required transport layer it will force the use of tls between the proxy and the database and it can also be ensured that the session uses tls and ssl between our client and the database proxy but for this to happen it must be done that at the client level the use of variables depending on the engine so for example, in MySQL, you need to use an SSL mode variable. For this demo, I will leave in blank. The ideal connection timeout. This is the, the amount of time that the proxy is going to terminate the idle connections. By default, it's 30 minutes. I will let in 30 minutes. Database. Click on database. I will select Aurora provision, my database. Connection pool, maximum connections. It is about a percentage that I could divide. For example, if I have two proxies, I could divide in 70 and 30. And 70 is for different kind of users for the 30%. So that's one of the applications. Here I will leave in 100%. Additional target group configuration. It is about the session pin and connection borrowing timeout that the default is two, two minutes and the maximum is five minutes. And also I have an in initialization query. I will leave completely in blank. Connectivity. So in order to connect to my database, I need a secrets manager. I already have one secrets create with all the information about the user and database for my database. So I will choose my secrets here. I will create an EIM role in order to connect and extract this information from Secrets Manager. EIM authentication, right now, we don't I don't have any EIM authentication. I'm working with user and password. Subnets, the both subnets that we, uh, I have using the database. Additional connectivity configuration, okay. I will use the security group by default, but take into account that uh, when you are using lambdas, you need to put the lambda inside a VPC and you need to authorize in this security group from the RDS proxy that all the traffic that comes from the lambda through the 3306 port, uh, it's completely allowed. So in my default security group, I will allow the port for my SQL connections and advanced configuration. I will leave in blank and click and create proxy. Okay, it will take some minutes in, in create the proxy. And once it's created, I'm going to test the file over again, but 
this time with the RDS proxy. Now the proxy is completely created. I will click on proxy reinvent. I will copy the proxy endpoint and I will paste and replace in my connection stream that I have for the database. I replace, click on save and start again my script clear and start again. So it is starting right into the database. I will go back to the database and I will force another failover. So actions, failover and failover. And you will see it is starting our failover. We'll go through the our Cloud9 instance and we will wait a few seconds in order to see if we lost some connection to the database using RDS proxy during the failover. So take a look, we lost just one second, one package, and it is it continues ingesting the data. So if we compare using our, the RDS proxy and using directly a database, you could see that we improve the time at least 10 times, because when we use directly to the database, we spend a lot of 10 seconds in order to complete the failover. So the use of RDS proxy is going to improve the failover time, improve the database performance, and improve the, ma the connection management in a serverless application. Because remember, this code that we are executing is the same code that you could use in different Lambda functions, just that I use include night in order to show you the connection in real time. Thank you very much for your time and please enjoy Rainbend.